PM was here for less than three days, and it was a very busy, I think, uh, 55, 56 hours that he was here in the U.S., uh, mostly for three things. One is the Quad meeting and the bilateral with uh, President Joe Biden. Largely, it was about consolidating those gains. And again, there was some strong language on China, very good coordination on third, con third countries and regions, including in Gaza, Ukraine, Yemen, uh, South China Sea. So there was a good mention of uh, global developments as well. I think India is one of the few countries that has, you know, can has a direct line, good relations with both Moscow and Kiev. Obviously, India has good relations with both Republicans and Democrats, has worked constructively with both. I don't see the relationship fundamentally changing under either Trump or uh, Harris presidency. Uh, there will be some shifts. Um, so on tr with Trump on trade and immigration, I think there will be some shifts. With Kamala Harris also, there will be some shifts despite her also being a Democrat. What I think both parties are trying to appeal to is uh, Indian Americans as donors, political donors, because they're very wealthy. PM was here for less than three days, and it was a very busy, I think, uh, 55, 56 hours that he was here in the U.S., uh, mostly for three things. One is the Quad meeting and the bilateral with uh, President Joe Biden, his last meeting before pre Biden leaves the presidency. Secondly, the diaspora and tech, tech connect, the U.S.-India bilateral relationship, and three, speaking at the summit for the future at the United Nations. So we managed to do all of that in a very short amount of time. So how crucial was the Quad summit I think it was about consolidating a lot that has been done in the past four years by the Quad. Uh, that was the main thing. There were a few new initiatives, including Coast Guard initiatives, some other uh, new, uh, including biotechnology, some new uh, developments there. Um, and, uh, but I think largely it was about consolidating those gains. And again, there was some strong language on China. Uh, there was also equally, I think, uh, of some very good coordination on third, con third countries and regions, including in Gaza, Ukraine, Yemen. Uh, South China Sea. So there was a good mention of uh, global developments as well. So Prime Minister also met with Ukrainian President Zelensky yes. and he reaffirmed uh, his support for peaceful resolution. How did you see that? I think, look, India wants uh, peace. I think the longer the war goes on, it's not in India's interest, it's not in many parties' interests. So I think what little India can do to help facilitate uh, a satisfactory outcome for all sides, I think, is appreciated. Uh, and I think India is one of the few countries that has, you know, can, has a direct line, good relations with both Moscow and Kiev. So in its small way, it's trying to play a role in facilitating that outcome. So last question, we have uh, upcoming U.S. elections. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your assessment on who is going to win and also what will you say on the Indian diaspora? What crucial role do you think that that can play? And also whoever comes to power, what relationship uh, anybody would have with mm. India? So I think the outcome is too early to determine. It's about, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, Kamala Harris is leading slightly in the polls, but it's still too, I, I don't think the outcome is very certain one way or the other. Um, so I don't think it, it's premature. Obviously, India has good relations with both Republicans and Democrats, has worked constructively with both. I don't see the relationship fundamentally changing under either Trump or uh, Harris presidency. Uh, there will be some shifts. Um, so on tr with Trump on trade and immigration, I think there will be some shifts. With Kamala Harris also, there will be some shifts despite her also being a Democrat. So uh, I do think we should prepare for some minor shifts in emphasis and different types of policy, but no fundamental changes to the trajectory of the relationship. Um, in terms of the Indian-American community, um, they're sizable, growing. They have a, uh, a sizable presence in, in some of the swing states, the key states, Georgia, Pennsylvania, a few other places. But their numbers still don't, are not decisive. Uh, what I think both parties are trying to appeal to is uh, Indian Americans as donors, political donors, because they're very wealthy. Uh, and in that sense, they can play a big role. And uh, we've seen attempts by both Trump and Harris to reach out to Indian American donors.